Mr. Frederick Lake. He is the Principal Corporate Technology Office of, D of DXC Technology, and he is leading the development of DXC's new Agile Architecture Framework. Right now, Frederick will provide an overview of how the Open Agile Architecture Standard can architect the enterprise to enable innovation at speed and scale. So let's please hear Frederick's video. During this talk, I'd like to give you an overview of the new Agile Architecture Standard. I will start with what motivates uh, its creation. I will then paint the big picture and introduce its key building blocks. Let's start with what characterizes digital native enterprises. It is speed, business agility, and the ability to scale. The digital enterprise must be capable of changing at a fast pace. Is classical enterprise fit for purpose in this new world? Perhaps not. When enterprise action departments impose models and standards developed in ivory towers, perform reviews and follow gated process, it slows down the pace of agile teams. When this happens, especially when agility as scale frameworks are deployed, such as Ceph or Spotify, enterprise architects become at risk of being sidelined. This exposes the enterprise to the risk of neglecting architectural concerns, which has consequences. First, inter-team boundaries are often ill-defined, which result in two blind spots, and we don't want to work. Second, too many explicit and implicit dependencies significantly slow down CICD pipelines, which curtails speed and business agility. Third, it becomes difficult to integrate components and products that have been developed independently by autonomous teams. Finally, developing and maintaining shared assets, such as digital platforms, is challenging. The Agile Action Standard addresses uh, these problems. It has been designed to complement process-oriented Agile frameworks. It provides a comprehensive approach to bring back uh, the actual concern at the center of the digital transformation. Let's introduce uh, now the main building blocks of the Agile Action Standard. Uh, at the center, you see uh, value-driven and concurrent. Uh, why value-driven? Uh, because it's not just uh, good enough uh, to deliver at a high speed uh, new product and features. Uh, those product and feature need to uh, bring value uh, to customers. Uh, so we need to shift from uh, being driven by requirements to being driven by value. Uh, concurrent. Uh, we all know that uh, agile uh, frameworks uh, promote uh, iteration, uh, but you are not going to uh, scale and, 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 and deliver at speed uh, just by iterating faster. Uh, you need to have uh, many teams that work in parallel, that work in a concurrent manner, and that really brings you uh, speed uh, because you will be able uh, to deliver more, uh, many teams uh, working on delivering in parallel, and you will be, of course, uh, able to scale uh, because if you need to develop more product or feature, you just need to add uh, more teams. Uh, on, on the top right, uh, we've got no, on the top left, we, we've got experience, and experience is about uh, understanding uh, customer problems, their job to be done, and defining the products uh, that you need to create uh, to uh, do those jobs uh, to satisfy those customers. Uh, on the top right, you've got product, and that corresponds to uh, the product architecture theme. If you have many teams working in parallel to develop products and features, you need to architect your product system uh, so that uh, each team uh, knows uh, what to do and you know where you can uh, uh, 
basically leverage commonality uh, to develop uh, new digital uh, platforms. Uh, on the bottom right, you've got software and hardware. Um, that dimension is, is about uh, uh, the software architecture that you need to leverage to actually innovate your products, but also uh, to create uh, more automated, more efficient uh, operations. Uh, on the left, uh, you've got the uh, operations uh, architecture building block. And that one uh, is about using the resources of the enterprise uh, in an efficient manner uh, so that you can deliver that experience, those products, uh, in a way that is cost effective so uh, your business model is profitable. And last uh, organization, uh, the organization building block uh, defines uh, uh, how you shape the organization to actually deliver new product experience uh, and, and operate the, the enterprise. Uh, let's move now to each of the building block. And the, the first one uh, is experience. Uh, for people who are familiar with design thinking, you will recognize the design thinking uh, approach where uh, you alternate uh, work on the solution space, uh, of the problem space, then the solution space, and you converge toward uh, defining uh, a value proposition, uh, identifying the, the, the product feature and the killer UI ID that will uh, define what your product uh, should be to actually uh, satisfy uh, your customer. Uh, the product actual building blocks uh, uh, is illustrated by uh, that picture where you see just a subset of the mini product a financial services company can, can distribute. And product architecture is about defining uh, those uh, product families and those products in a way where each of the product is uh, modular enough uh, so that you can have teams that are responsible for them, for instance, uh, a team, uh, consumer credit, for instance, tribe, uh, in charge of uh, both uh, designing and uh, re exploiting uh, consumer credit products in a way that is not too dependent from uh, other teams. Uh, product architecture is also very important to identify commonalities and those commonalities will end up in, in platforms that will be shared by uh, uh, several products. And at the bottom, you've got uh, the example of Quicken and Mayoto, uh, which are digital company who uh, leverages the power of platform, uh, the power of a highly uh, modular product architecture uh, to deliver a new product uh, faster, uh, new services faster. Uh, the next building block is the uh, operations action building block. Uh, the idea is to create operating models that uh, are made of value stream and processes which implements the customer and employee journey that uh, the experience uh, uh, design building block uh, as defined, and that uh, operating building block leverages uh, lean, lean management, uh, automation, the power of analytics uh, to continuously improve uh, those value stream processes, uh, redesign them necessary, and automate them uh, with the power of uh, artificial intelligence. The last building, the uh, last the specific building block uh, is the, the software architecture building block. Uh, I, I will not go into much detail here, but just say that uh, the Agile Actual Standard incorporates uh, uh, modern uh, software engineering uh, techniques uh, ranging from domain driven design to DevOps and uh, SRE. Uh, those uh, software engineering uh, approach are extremely important to scale and also to deliver uh, a reliable uh, customer experience uh, because if your site is done for 
uh, let's say a few minutes to several hours and we've seen that uh, with, with large uh, uh, companies uh, both uh, uh, digital native and not digital native uh, it really jeopardizes uh, the customer experience and all of that uh, can only uh, be achieved if we organize uh, the teams and the teams of teams in a way that mirrors the internal architecture and if we align those teams uh, using um, uh, a new way of uh, uh, managing uh, which are uh, more based on uh, defining uh, shared vision and purposes uh, rather than uh, giving orders and which uses uh, approach um, techniques such as defining forcing functions and in Paddy Fagan's talk you will see uh, an illustration of how forcing function uh, can be used. Uh, the uh, key idea here is that if you uh, have an organization that is not well aligned on your internal architecture, chances are that the organization will win, so you will uh, not be capable of implementing uh, your architecture vision. Uh, so now let me uh, uh, give you a few minutes. Uh, I'm sure you have... Uh, uh, a few questions uh, regarding the uh, Agile Action Standard, and I will be happy to, to answer to them. Thank you for that, Frederick. Are you uh, available? We, ha we have time for maybe uh, one question, if, we, uh, if you're available to answer. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for that, uh, that overview, Frederick. Um, one of the questions that's that's come in a, a couple of times already, um, uh, initially from from Eve's video, but you spoke you just spoke to it a bit. Can you elaborate um, a little more on the on the project to product m move, the differentiation that that's uh, that you've you've mentioned? The product <clears throat> uh, actually. Uh is referred to in many uh, agile framework uh, but most of the time product is not defined and the reason is product uh, may have different meaning for different people uh, in that context the shift from uh, project to product uh, means that you are uh, going from uh, temporary teams i mean you know project teams you bring resources on board and, and then when the project is, uh -huh. Over, then you uh, disassemble the team to stable teams, uh, which will uh, last uh, in time. And those stable teams are responsible for uh, not only developing the new product, but also operating. I mean, you, you build it, you run it. Uh, it's something you hear a lot in the software industry now so uh, when we talk about uh, that sheet we are referring to that uh, and of course uh, we have a definition of a product that is more general in the uh, OA, uh, which is uh, services and or goods uh, but the shift uh, to, to product from project to product refers uh, really to those stable team okay great thank you frederick 